the judiciary has long been considered the last line of defense against anarchy. And with India heading towards lawlessness as a result of vast power being held in the hands of a few in the midst of a corrupt system, this defense is under fire as well. It has its champions, of course. One such person's activism to hold on to this last bastion of justice coming up on Unraveling India. Continuing the elitist legacy of the British era, the Indian Supreme Court works only 193 days a year. And continuing British antipathy toward law and order in India, there are only 18 judges per million people compared to 102 in the U.S. and 147 in China. As a result, over 30 million cases are pending in Indian courts. At the current rate, it will take more than 300 years to clear these cases. And to make matters worse, according to a former Supreme Court justice, at least 50% of the higher judiciary is corrupt. But there are honest judges and lawyers holding the system accountable. One of them is Prince Lenin. He is a lawyer based in Lucknow, the capital of India's largest state, Uttar Pradesh. He founded the nonprofit organization We the People to help the poor seek justice using public interest litigation. We talked to Prince to learn about his work and the state of justice in India today. Mr. Prince Lenin, welcome to Unraveling India. Thank you. So before uh, diving into the actual interview, if you can explain uh, the Indian justice system, uh, what are uh, different courts and how judges and justices are appointed uh, to those courts? Uh, if we talk about Indian judicial system, Indian judicial system is a vastly diversified system. It starts, uh, originates from grassroots level, from Munsif courts, uh, which is uh, also known as magisterial courts. And later on, uh, the, as your case proceeds and the provisions are there for appeals and uh, further appellate uh, courts, the, then it comes before the Sessions Court, uh, which is uh, called District Judge Court. Thereafter, you reach to High Court, that is the state judiciary level. And at the national level, you have your Apex Court, that is called the Supreme Court of India. Uh, if we talk about uh, the Indian judicial system, Indian ju judicial system is uh, far more equipped with powers which are uh, meant to protect the rights of the people at large, precisely if uh, uh, any government action which is being going on uh, to curb the rights of the people. Courts are always open and uh, it's always there to protect the interest of the people, apart from your own individual disputes, civil disputes, criminal disputes. The, precisely the strongest part of this Indian judiciary is the, uh, those public interest litigations where the court comes forward to protect the public at large, be it their rights, uh, pertaining to any, you can say, medical rights, educational rights, or any freedom which, uh, which uh, uh, they are being uh, uh, well equipped with the, by virtue of the Constitution of India, which provides them uh, some fundamental rights. So the court has a very precise and it has a very large uh, role to play in the life of the people of India. Now I, I would like to deep dive into your, your activism, especially the work you have been doing by filing various public interest litigations, uh, whether it's related to women's and children's safety, government healthcare system, bureaucratic corruption, farmers issue or uh, freedom of speech in India. So let's start with uh, uh, the public interest litigation you filed in 2017. It was filed on behalf of uh, 12 school children who died in a road accident on account of the negligence of the school and district administrative authorities. So I want to provide uh, some statistics uh, for the audience uh, here. In 2016, the latest year for which the data is available, there were more than 480,000 accidents in India and more than 150 people were killed uh, in those accidents. 
uh, some of the accidents uh, of course were uh, due to the negligence of the drivers but many were due to uh, the bad roads and the most important is absent or completely absent emergency ambulance um, and healthcare service service in india so for example in the us the emergency service arrives within within minutes but in india people bleed on the streets you know for hours before any attention is is given to them so so why did you think you know there was a negligence on part of the authorities uh, when these you know school children died and were any action taken against the authorities and were any steps taken to avoid such instances uh, in the future um Deepak, uh, in the case which we are referring to is uh, pertaining to the road accidents of school going children uh, we have large number of cases uh, wherein accidents keep on occurring the data which you had mentioned pertains to the overall scenario of the road accidents within india and a large form of the, such uh, incidents uh, also comprises of school going buses school uh, children carrying vans which collide with vehicles on account of negligence of the service providers there had been repeated incidents for the last uh, several years and there have been uh, standing orders of the honorable apex court to the schools and the authorities concerned to look after to comply the standards and provisions of uh, uh, the uh, road uh, safety norms that the vehicle has to be uh, in upright position as in many cases it was found that the vehicle was suffering severely severely it was lacking service conditions it was not in uh, an any form of uh, uh, capacity to carry on passengers and the children were being taken from one place to another and it met with its fate and uh, caused a, a huge amount of uh, casualties resulting in loss of valuable uh, lives of uh, innocent children so the petition was filed and the court has uh, asked upon the state government that what steps it has taken to ensure the directions of the honorable apex court uh, which have been uh, laid in various cases wherein it has been observed for example that the uh, subdivisional magistrate will look after the uh, status of the vehicle and he, he will cross check that uh, the vehicles are being run in a proper form because transport authorities are not performing their duties in a fair and proper manner these things keep on emerging in various incidents that the um, vehicle was carrying fitness certificate but it's all paperwork a uh, ground reality of that vehicle is being zero and uh, on paper it's up to marks so it results in such instances for which valuable lives are being lost upon so this uh, uh, case is being looked after so such uh, instances wherein uh, these accidents have taken place and the people who are accountable for those uh, lives uh, should be held guilty yeah so that's that's another big problem in india you know the transportation department uh, if i remember correctly the current uh, current minister of road transport and highways uh, nitin gadkari once said that this you know transport officers behave like mafias you know there is rampant and open corruption in all transport offices uh, the recent released recently released data says that 60% of indian drivers get uh, their license without a road test and i remember when i i wanted to get a license uh, for myself i took a driving classes i learned how to drive well but when i went to uh, when i went for a road test the officer you know did not even bother to test me because he gets a uh, bribe you know whether whether you know how to drive or not so it's there is no incentive for him you know to really test my my skills um and as you said a vehicle can pass um, pass the inspection in india without you know inspected without being inspected uh, if you pay a bribe or rather you know you have to pay a bribe whether your vehicle is in good condition or, or not so it's it's really sad that you know those children lost their lives do you know if if the families got any any compensation from the government uh, deepak uh, definitely this is a case where in corruption has a huge role to play because the officers who are responsible to take care of these things uh, have been failing to perform their uh, duties as per the directions of law and the discipline which is being uh, required uh, upon themselves 
so this uh, on account of this corruption which is being prevalent within the indian departments uh, at a very vast level right from uh, bottom to the top so these sort of incidents uh, keep happening and people innocent people keep losing their lives and uh, if we talk about compensation uh, some other go other government uh, seldom often they come up with some declaration of the compensation but for the time uh, and it's well known to the people that uh, many promises uh, go in uh, abeyance and uh, with the change of government or with some ministries these things kept persisting so the problem is here that the there has been a, a huge failure on the part of the responsible persons to look up to their duties and perform their duties so that they can protect the uh, rights and the lives of the innocent people at large i came across a very interesting research done by an indian professor from harvard along with other professors so they found out uh, the rampant corruption in the allocation of driving licenses, both in India and Mexico. And Mexico did very, uh, very interesting out of the box thing. It abolished the license allocation process completely because anyway, the licenses were not given without a bribe. So, you know, why allow these officers, corrupt officers to make money? Uh, I think India needs to do, uh, uh, needs to deregulate uh, in order to reduce, uh, reduce the corruption. No, but in that case, but in that case, uh, the government must have entrusted upon the people that they will perform their duties. If there uh, has been a failure on the part of authorities, then the citizen will perform their duties that they will adhere uh, to the honesty that uh, they will drive the vehicle after obtaining uh, due um, training and if performing their uh, uh, duties towards other citizens. So that's why that government must have taken this decision. But here in India, uh, people are hardly bothered about uh, others' individuals' rights. This is a major question, major reason also, because they are bothered about themselves only. People have stopped thinking about bothering about others' individuals' rights. When, when a person suffers any loss or injury, then they will call upon, look, nobody comes uh, uh, to help, nobody stands up for the cause. You put them the question that how, for how many people you have stood up? Haven't you encountered uh, uh, any such incident in your entire life? Then the answers will be on a very sad side because here there are very less people who stand up for the causes because now you can see uh, in such instances also there a new uh, thing is being emerging which is called road rage because people will start fighting on the roads if you will if you will try to uh, protect any individual's right then there will be uh, muscles being uh, flexed upon you so people try to ignore all these things and they try to avoid such uh, uh, circumstances so they should not uh, indulge themselves into such uh, criminal activities this is the one more uh, reason for the people why they are avoiding to uh, come forward to help uh, such people who are in distress and who are in immediate need of medical help. So this is one, also, one of the concern also. So let's talk about the horrible state of uh, Indian government hospitals. I have some, some officials, uh, official numbers here. I'm sure the real numbers will be you know, far worse than, than the official numbers. So these numbers are only for, you know, child deaths in only one government hospital, which is a uh, BRD government hospital in, uh, in Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh. And, and we are not even talking about, you know, how many, how many adults uh, died in these hospitals. These numbers are only for the children. So in year 2014, 5,800 children died. In 2015, around 7,000. And in 2016, 6,000 children died just in one hospital uh, in India. And these deaths are 10% of total admitted children. And, and no, one, no one has been held accountable for these deaths. A, a, a private hospital uh, in Delhi was recently shut down for negligence and uh, when no one even died. So it's, it's very clear that private institutions are made, are, are made scapegoat uh, to show to the public that you know, politicians uh, care about our, our well-being. So you have done some good work uh, to, to hold uh, these uh, government hospitals uh, accountable. You filed at least three public interest litigation. One, uh, one was to ensure 
fire safety in government hospitals. Another was to ensure uh, adequate ventilators. And the third one was uh, to establish surveillance units for regular checkup uh, in, in critical uh, care areas uh, in, in district government hospitals uh, in, in Uttar Pradesh. So what was the trigger uh, behind, uh, behind filing, the, uh, filing the PILs, uh, this public interest litigation? Deepak, I, I'll, I'll narrate you how, how I got uh, encouragement to file such uh, uh, petitions re regarding health services. Once I was uh, coming back home and I found a person lying in pool of uh, blood by the roadside. Uh, with the help of my friend, we took him to the trauma center, uh, which is the state-wise uh, best uh, available facility for the people within the state of UP, in, precisely in the city of Lucknow. What I noted over there was that that was an uh, eve of a uh, 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 very uh, auspicious festival, Holi. So there were many cases of road accidents and the people were lying here and there and uh, you won't believe that the people were being uh, carried upon by the, their uh, relatives and friends uh, in bed sheets. There were no uh, stretchers or wheelchairs to carry the patient if they were being taken for any x-ray or blood check. They were being wrapped in uh, bed sheet and the people were carrying them like dead bodies. I took photographs of those uh, patients and then ne very next day I filed a petition in the year 2011 seeking uh, betterment of medical facilities within the state of UP. And the court had observed that this petition uh, makes a very sad commentary upon the existing medical and health conditions within the state of UP. And uh, upon that uh, entire state of UP was uh, being uh, directed to be looked up after and uh, it was being called upon that uh, government should provide each and every details of uh, primary health care unit and uh, hospitals district wise. But by the course of lapse of time and the change of the judge these pro proceedings are being kept in abeyance and they lose their uh, very authority uh, by the virtue of time so these incidents keep on coming one after the other you were talking uh, talking about ventilators uh, Every other day the news was coming that any newly born uh, baby lost his uh, life because he was uh, not in a position to breathe and there was no ventilator and same thing came up for several critical people. So I filed a petition before the Honorable Court and court uh, issued uh, immediately issued directions that the this is a very pro bono litigation uh, state should uh, not uh, state should not wait for our orders in such cases it should come up with uh, such plans and such uh, 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 directions that these things are being taken upon uh, and these uh, things are being taken care of so and same thing uh, happened when there was a fire uh, incident of fire in a go government hospital and this was not the very first incident it, this incident has taken place for continuously three years in each successive year this incident of fire took uh, place and uh, uh, the staff ran away from the hospital leaving uh, aside all those patients and the children who were admitted so again a petition was filed and the, on that petition the court ordered to form a committee who will look after the uh, fire safety norms of the entire hospitals with in the state of UP. So these things are being again and again placed before the court and uh, that uh, the critical care uh, unit, the infections are being uh, caused to the several patients. There was an eye uh, operations performed and due to infection, uh, several people lost uh, their life. Some have to uh, lose their limb on account of uh, post-operational infections. So again, uh, it's the court uh, where we approach and we pray for uh, reliefs and court come forward to uh, direct the government to uh, make necessary arrangements and immediate and adequate measures should be taken. So th these things are being going on and on for years and years and still uh, things are not in a very good state. My family has experienced uh, this uh, sad state of the accident victims and the Indian healthcare system. Uh, my aunt had an accident. She was, she was lying on the busy street for hours. Then she was taken to a private hospital, which refused to admit her. 
then she was transported to a government hospital you know and where where she, uh, where she died um, there was there were so many uh, there were so many uh, such incidences and there's so much corruption that you know you don't know where to where to get get help from i think the question to be asked is do we really need these government departments when i was in india i could not get a single government work done without paying a bribe and you can get almost every anything and everything done if you pay a bribe so why why don't we just abolish you know these government department instead of because instead of serving them instead of serving people you know they have become source of you know making illegitimate a fortune for for government officers and if you ask politicians bureaucrats and judges they will always tell you that you know we need more laws and more regulations because they will never agree with us you know to getting rid of these departments because they are the biggest beneficiaries why would they not want to have these institutions when uh, when when I, i was applying for education loan uh, the government managers you know ask me for 5 to 10% of the total loan as a bribe and most of the uh, government employees make more money than you know uh, than the executives in in the us for example for one signature you know government officers you know officer ask in the, in a small town ask for 150 to 200 uh, dollars you know and they make you know dozens of these signatures in a day so just imagine how much money they make and uh, that's just a small government officer in a, in a small town and we are not even talking about the bureaucrats and judges you know that sit in uh, sit in you know in 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 larger cities public interest litigation i want to talk about is that of uh, rinku singh rahi i interviewed him uh, some time back and i came to know about you you from him he was shot for doing his job uh, honestly he told me that without without knowing him you filed uh, a public li- interest litigation uh, to provide him uh, the police protection uh, look deepak one fine day one fine day in newspaper headlines it was the case of rinku singh rahi he was sitting on protest in the capital of uh, up that is lucknow and the uh, one of the prominent newspaper published his story on the front page so i still rem- remember that on that day i came uh, to know that how a uh, government officer a whistle blower officer was dearly uh, facing all these corrupt people within the government within the state machinery and he has uh, suffered a, such a brutal attack on the part of his uh, on his life i can i can never forget such an officer who who almost ended up his life uh, fighting raising his voice against corruption he had ex- exposed a scam of to the tunes of several thousand crores of rupees he was asked upon either to accept the bribe or just to keep his mouth s- shut but being a whistle blower and being an honest officer he kept on raising his voice and ultimately he was being severely attacked and sh- uh, shot upon by uh, on a very close range and he lost his eye and other vital parts when this story was published i uh, uh, searched for him on uh, google and then i came to know about his uh, what his uh, life is and how he is uh, uh, fighting uh, and raising his voice against corruption then i prepared a pil and placed it before the court seeking a uh, cbi investigation into his allegation and further uh, to provide him protection and on that pil the court ordered that the state will ensure that no harm is caused to mr rinku singh rahi and immediately he was being provided with police protection then later on the instru- on the instructions of the court uh, the comments were being called upon that what are the, his uh, allegations of corruption then it came up before the court that yes 50 crores rupees has been uh, manipulated it has been um, uh, uh, it has been misused by the authorities and uh, now arrest have been made but it's an i wash only and the court on further hearings observed that the state was not coming up with clean hands and they were trying to protect some 
people so they again ordered for an uh, inquiry and the matter is still pending with the government and then their inquiry has not concluded yet so this is what uh, happened to a person who raises his voice for the cause of the people who raises his voice against corruption he is being taken up to task nobody comes up for his help it's 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 very unfortunate that here in india if you are raising your voice against corruption then you will have to take a toll on your life you 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 every moment your life is in grave threat these things keep on happening around me also i also came across so many conspiracies that wherein i i was told that i was about to be murdered and there were uh, shooters being called upon but uh at the last moment uh, this plan could not be uh, given effect to due to some or the other reason so i am happy and i am thankful to god that he is there to look after uh, me and people like rinku singh rahi who risk their life for the cause of the people so the corruption within this country is a uh, uh, very severe problem and it's not going to eradicate so easily though there have been efforts uh, being put up by someone or the other in the government to eradicate corruption to give this uh, people a corruption free government and all but these things are only right now only a matter of uh, uh, talks and talks and talks and nothing is uh, coming on the ground uh, ground reality of this na- nation and its people is very pathetic to give some information uh Uh, for the audience the the scam was uh, more than 10 million dollars in just one department in one district in in india there are more than 700 districts uh, in india according to uh, a famous comment made by the former prime minister uh, rajiv gandhi only 15 cents of every dollar spent by the government reaches to the indian intended uh, recipient and now i came to believe that you know the government officers and politicians are the intended uh, recipients uh, and not the not the common uh, common citizens so you can imagine the amount of corrupt money being generated uh, in india most of the money goes towards uh, buying land apartments uh, and gold and billions of dollars you know uh, are laundered out of out of the country in uh, tax havens as a result of this you know corruption the land prices go up and everything uh, becomes more expensive a- as a result So this was the first of uh, two parts uh, with Mr Prince Lenin. Thank you for uh, watching Unraveling India. See you next time. तो ह्या होत्या कल्पना सरोजजी आपल्याबरोबर मुंबई भारतातून अनरॅव्हलिंग इंडियासाठी मी आपला होस्ट दीपक बिडवाई धन्यवाद